Greetings. This is James Gunn with As You Wish Talk Radio. We've got a great show tonight. I'm going to skip all the other intros because we had a little technical difficulty in getting on the air. So uh, I'm going to go straight to our guest. We've got uh, Bradley Lockerman on, uh, and we've got John Searle. We're going to start off with Bradley Lockerman, and they just uh, got back from the Tecla, uh, Tesla Tech Conference. Actually, say that three times real fast. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and uh, yeah, it's a... It's, uh, Quite an interesting. I, I've, I've followed a lot of these movements for quite some time. So, uh, without any further ado, let's bring uh, Bradley on the air. Are you with us, Bradley? You betcha, James. How you doing? Great to be here with you. And yes, it's Tesla Tech, and that is a little difficult to say. <laughs> yeah. The. Uh, I've By the way, with some I other. I'll go ahead. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I was just going to say we, we have one more day here. We will be doing tomorrow at 1 o'clock. John will do two hours on a very significant uh, uh, piece of hardware that he's brought. So I'm sorry. Right. I didn't mean to interrupt you there. Yeah. Now, some of the hardware that he's built, I know he's got uh, – could you explain that rather than me butcher? I don't know if he – I know he's got fuelless, uh, fuelless energy technology, and I don't know if it's anti or counter gravity. And, well, he'll uh, just tell you – I'm sorry, James, again. Uh, okay. I beg your pardon. Uh, he'll tell you it's inverse gravity. Okay. And that's a new one for me, but I'll have to study up on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's quite fascinating. Uh, just in brief, uh, three rings and uh, three sets of rollers uh, that come from a man and his dreams Mm -hmm. uh, when he was a child, uh, his dreams were two uh, specific dreams, and they were repeated over six years when he was a child. And he had a very brutal childhood, and you can see that in the John Searle story, the film. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was in 1946, while he was working at British Rewinds in the north of London, that he just came up with a new idea, a different kind of uh, induction of electricity that was based on uh, neodymium and the uh, ability to induce electrons to move through some layered elements using centrifugal forces and magnetic fields. And it's a, just a remarkable um, situation, a remarkable man. He is a living legend and nowadays uh, mostly referred to as the godfather of free energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh, I know the field there, I, I work with, uh, I don't know if you know him, but uh, his name's, uh, well, they called him Max uh, Langenberg, but Albert uh, is, his, is his real name, but he uh, he has some very interesting toys, and I, and I worked with him for seven years, you know, trying to get some of this technology out, so I, I know what you guys have been up against. Uh, he has family threatened and, and lab blown up and car stolen and... and uh, you know, we didn't know if we were going to wake up breathing the next day several times, and, and uh, luckily yeah, I'm not involved in that right now. So. <laughs> well, you know, James, and again, uh, John will tell you this himself in a minute or two, but uh, he's just so wide open about it, and uh, he will say, uh, come in, uh, you don't have to hide behind a bush, come in the front door, come in, have a cup of tea, have a chat, you want to know what we're doing, fine, the doors are open, come on in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we we tried that approach in the beginning, but uh, it just didn't seem to work. We we found out in the free energy movement, a lot of the people weren't really who they say they are, and uh, and the integrity levels weren't there, and a lot of promises were made that that didn't that weren't fulfilled. And and after several demonstrations and all the heat that came out of those demonstrations, you know, he just decided to put it on the shelf and dismantle it and wait, you know, for a later date. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, what I found fascinating with the uh, John Searle story is that it is in an area of resonance and frequency, and we find both resonance and frequency within all living things, all stationary things, all moving things. I love these guys that come along, and the, and the anathema in physics is perpetual motion. Well, pardon me, but look at the simple particles running around the nucleus of, a, of an atom, and they're called electrons, and I'm sorry, but they are perpetual motion machines. So uh, the fact that matter is as dense as it is, and yet if you get down to the quantum level, it's not dense at all. There's more space there than there is matter. So why can't you pass your hand through your desk? 
um, you know, these are conundrums I think that are that are coming about, uh, but they're coming about I think uh, in our day and age with uh, a set of answers or a set of new possibilities or perhaps a paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. I actually know some people that can put their hands through decks, <laughs> desks and walk through yeah, walls freaky. and things like that. So, so to me, it's it's not uh, it's not that big of a stretch. You know, I've had I've had actually llamas appear in my living room floating and then disappear, and uh, I won't go I can go further into that, but I think this is yeah. more about the uh, other technologies. Yeah, that my goodness, that would uh, startle me. I think I'd leave the room. Yeah, well, you know, if you if you don't react with fear, you can hang out and learn something. But the uh, you know up here we're having some some activity that is is just insane. We've we've got probably a thousand hours of footage of of objects flying up there that that aren't ours, according to uh, you know triple PhD Boeing engineers and Lockheed engineers and Skunk Works people that have been out here. And uh, oh you know it. It's a nightly thing. We pull up our lawn chairs and we sit out and watch UFOs, you know, flying around Mount Adams. Wow. Well, that's fascinating. You know, again, uh, uh, back to John in the 50s and the 60s, uh, there were occasions uh, I hope we're able to ask him about uh, Warminster or about uh, uh, in any particular period in his life when uh, he was flying them regularly on a, a come and see show type uh, uh, situation where uh, folks were seeing all kinds of UFOs to, in the Warminster area. Uh, turns out that uh, uh, how many of these were the uh, craft that uh, John Searle was flying off Crookham Hill nearby? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah. You never know nowadays. These, um, you know, we had these Lockheed and Skunk Works people looking at it, and they said, you know, these are massive. Uh, massive ships. Some are miles wide, and and they're you know morphing from one to three and back to one again, and and uh, wow. just doing crazy things that you know stopping, making right angle turns, you know powering up, lighting up the whole sky. Um, oh you know, and we've got hours of footage of this with you know uh, one of the things that just happened. We had a conference up here with. Over 300 people attended this conference, and we just got out of one of the events, and this beautiful uh, reddish-pink UFO flew right over the top of the conference building with everybody, you know, standing outside. And a Lockheed engineer actually filmed it, and uh, a geophysicist filmed it, and then uh, a Latin American UFO researcher were all there. They all filmed it with over 200 witnesses. My goodness. Yeah, but you know it's fascinating, and uh, the unexplained are are as fascinating as anything. And uh, my experience is that the explained situation is even more fascinating. And uh, you know, when I met John Searle back in 1994, uh, we were at uh, the Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado, and he stepped mm -hmm. up to me and told me a story. And I, you know, my jaw hit the ground. My eyebrows went back on the top of my head. I, I just could not believe what I heard. Thirty-five minutes of the most fantastic, off-the-wall, mind-bender thing I'd ever heard. And there it is. And here's this little fellow with bright sky blue eyes and all the energy of a human being that could have, and this beautiful smile. And he told me the story, and all I could say was, "You're a movie." And then I went, "Oh my God." <laughs> This, this is, that's the wildest story I ever heard. This, and and this is a this is a real thing sitting in front of me. This isn't you know something come out and look or or look at a piece of footage or anything else. The man is standing in front of me. Mm -hmm. So when I started to look into it, that became more fascinating than uh, anything I'd ever seen uh, in any particular situation. And of course, it's come uh, nearly full cycle now to. Uh, this event down here and of course the event in Leeds uh, next week or I think it's in two weeks where uh, he'll be speaking in front of a very uh, academic crowd at Leeds University and again addressing the same thing uh, you know John tell us about the SEG the Searle effect generator tell us about uh, how it works and uh, how it uh, behaves under certain conditions and how can this benefit mankind Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that'll be quite awesome. We we had uh, we had uh, Walter Rosenthal with us, and you know he's known as the Rocket Man, you know, with NASA and everything. And he uh, he looked at some of the devices this other guy worked with, and and he gave it to him. He said, "Look, I'll you can sit in my lab, you can look at it, you can take it apart, put it back together, run it." Did everything, and uh, and he said, if you can figure out how it works, you can have it. And he never did. <laughs> you know, they. Oh my God. Yeah, here's a couple, you know, NASA guys and scientists, and they they could not figure out how this this thing worked. And it it not only put out an enormous amount of of energy, uh, usable energy, it also took off. You know, if you didn't if you didn't have a governor on it and slow the rotation down on it, you know, it was ice cold. And it would take off, and actually broke his arm once uh, going through the roof. He tried to grab it and lost one of them, you know. But uh, well, uh, my, you know, with a a couple of uh, twists and turns, uh, this is nearly the the John Searle story from 1946. In fact, you know, why don't we bring him in here and have him tell you? I'll I'll give you a little context. Uh, it's uh, post World War II England. 1946, and John has basically been raised as an orphan. Um, it was very difficult for him when he was young, and Dr. Bernardo's homes had put him in foster homes from place to place. But after he left the naval school, uh, did his naval training, he's 14 years old, and he's placed at British Rewinds. Now, that's a company in North London that basically rebuilds generators so he's working with magnets and coils and rewinding and winding and refurbishing and he comes up with a new idea and maybe we can bring him in here now james and he can tell you about his experience with his landlady that sounds great i'd love to hear the story hello uh, james as yes, well, I was, welcome to the show i'm uh, sorry no i'm saying welcome to the show uh i oh, i can't you. Say enough how much I admire your work and your courage in in fulfilling, you know, this destiny you've chosen, and and I'm just totally amazed at uh, some of these new technologies you put together. I, I, I think if you was on the sun at the Sunday afternoon show, uh, show I think you would be amazed, uh, mm -hmm. absolutely amazed, that uh, a school boy could put together such a project and get people to actually produce it for him at no cost to him, hardly any cost. All he had to do is tell them how to do it, and they did it. And uh, people who said he could have done it because he didn't have the money. That's right, I didn't have the money. But then, you see, when I worked, they were interested to see if I could be shut up whether I should leave the company uh, because I won't shut up. So they actually gave me the opportunity to prove that it could be done. Unfortunately, just at that period, nuclear power was coming online. And uh, the area in the Midlands, some streets had 240 volts AC, some had 110 DC, some here had even only 100 DC, and it was well, it was just chaos. Look good for mm -hmm. atomic power, so we had to go through.